exactly. <laughs> so it, it is episode 666. I want to talk about hmm. some spooky things. So as as far as demons know, your demon knowledge, Wendigo. Mm-hmm. Yes. You've looked into it a ton. Mm-hmm. What's like a an indicator to you when you're reading a demon story that mm-hmm. you're like, this is made up, this is fake. And what are the ones that get you like, oh, I kind of buy this. I think this could be a real one. So the thing that's like, as someone who like, you know, believes in it, like I'm a Christian, I'm not, I'm not like some levels of religious Christians will get to where it's like, like recently I covered a video game called Faith that revolves demons and talking to the creator. He's like, yeah, I get emails all the time from people who think if you put like a pentagram in a game, you're going to hell. Like, obviously that's not the level I'm at. You've seen the content I cover. Um, But as far as like reading stories about demonology or whatever, it's typically the theatrics of it. Um, For that same reason, I believe possessions can happen, but I believe that like 99% of them are fake. Uh, because a, a demon's MO or like in within Christianity, right? Like the devil's MO isn't to scare people or be weird and strange. <laughs> like he, yeah. he's not just creeping around like, hoo ha, they're going to be so afraid of this one. Uh, and that's mm-hmm. what most like demon stories revolve around. It's just to divert people. It's just to point them away from God or Christianity or what have you. Uh, most examples of demonic influence throughout like the Bible or old like, you know, religious traditions aren't even people who are like, you know, frothing at the mouth, possessed, yelling obscenities. That's not even what they do. Most of what they do is just being like leaders, people who will, you know, take the poor and the hungry and push them back to some righteous way until eventually bringing them into cult Mm -hmm. activities or what have you. Um, I would, I would say that there's in my belief, there's a lot more possessed people in places of power or what have you than there are like, you know, satanic cult members like the, the church of Satan and the satanic Bible. And that's, that's just poser stuff. That's all a joke, but the real stuff, so to speak, is just manipulation. Um, $50 wasted. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Lifetime membership be for Kyle. Take There's like Rube. I pay dues. Th- God damn it! This is horse shit. <laughs> <laughs> um, the one thing that like I've researched lately, there's kind of a white whale for me in demonology of like something that I think would make a really cool video that I think I could dissect, but I'm a little afraid to. Uh, mm. Is this thing called um, the Lesser Key of Solomon? Are you familiar with it? Is anyone familiar with it? Mm-mm. So I have heard of this. Yes. Yeah. So the lesser key of Solomon is a book that was its final version. Like the version that exists now was assembled around like 1720, like just pre America or pre, you know, government America. Uh, But the writings of it supposedly trace all the way back to like 800, 900 BC. Um, So in the original, like Judaism lore and by extension Christianity, but primarily Judaism, uh, when Solomon, the son of King David, built the temple in Jerusalem, uh, he used all of his wisdom and power to do it. Uh, it's believed in most uh, Abrahamic religions that Solomon was the wisest man who ever lived uh, because he asked the Lord for wisdom, the Lord gave him wisdom, blah, blah, blah. So Solomon, being the wisest man who ever lived, was able to use a lot of powers of spirituality to build the temple. And again, in Judaism, it's believed, maybe not in their canon, but at least in, you know, Judaism adjacent beliefs, that he effectively enslaved several demons to commission the building of the temple. That's how the temple was built in record time. There's all this weird stuff with the temple, like the geometry of it is so perfectly done, like the way the walls are cut. It doesn't make sense for something done, you know, in in BC time period. It's like Mm -hmm. an architectural marvel for the time that it was built. So one of the beliefs is that he used demons to do that. The lesser key of Solomon uh, was supposedly assembled by his workers, or the human workers at least, in the construction of the temple. The Masons, as they were called, which is where the Freemasons eventually get their name. They use a lot of the symbols and stuff from Solomon's builders. And there's whole connections between demonology and Freemasonry. That's that's another can of worms. But (laughs) with the construction of Solomon's temple... It's believed that perhaps he enslaved demons. So a book called The Lesser Key of Solomon is the traditional beliefs of supposedly how Solomon managed to enslave these demons. So it is a book that is made up of 72 different demons that describes their name, uh, their MO, what they do, what they look like, how they appear, as well as summoning rituals. So like the things you're supposed to draw 
the things you have to do to bring them in. And going back to what I mentioned earlier of like the thing that tips me off demon stories are fake is the theatrics of it. The way that like you summon most of the demons in this book is like, forget to pray for a day or um oh, no pre- or, or yeah exactly yeah it's, <laughs> which is so much more menacing than just like oh dude you know cut yourself and draw blood yeah. or whatever i need it, a bunch of chickens and you exactly know. It, it'll be like forget to pray for a day or uh don't spend any money today instead leave it uh leave it uh near your bed or like put the money under your bed or stuff like that like these subtle things that you don't think about at once but it's slowly lulls you into this idea of either self-reliance or trusting a demon in some sense stop stop looking to god for all your answers just you can take care of yourself you should be looking to yourself for answers Mm -hmm. and then by the end of it it gives you summoning rituals and what you can ask of these demons so there's some that will give you wealth there's some that will give you love and again the most demonic stories in pop culture are around, you know, oh, this d- this demon wants to damn your soul to hell. They want to curse you and blah, blah, blah. But again, the way it's normally given throughout Christianity's lore is they want to give you good things. They want you to trust them. They want you to come over to their side because their ultimate goal is to put you to point you away from mm-hmm. what's true and holy. So because mm-hmm. of that, there's nothing in the Lesser Key of Solomon that says, And if you do this, uh, your house will burn down or you have to sacrifice your firstborn. It's all like you'll get money and then everything will be good. Look at that. You did it yourself. And because of that, it is the most menacing. It scares me so much. The concepts of it, it bothers me because like. Yeah, you hear all these stories like you want you on YouTube. How many, you know, oh, summoning the devil at 3 a.m. videos, whatever. Like sure. all those are clearly fake. But if someone was to do like a lesser key of Solomon, they're like, oh, look at that. <laughs> My stocks went up this week. How mm-hmm. lovely. Absolutely not. <laughs> it, it terrifies me. So I've thought about doing a video on that. But again, as someone who truly does believe in it, at least to a degree, I am so afraid of like. Being like, okay, hey kids, so this is the demon's name, uh, and here's his sigil. Be sure to draw this on your bathtub or whatever. Like, yeah. Um, but <laughs> yeah, the yeah. Power that a demon could 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 have through you with your audience. Exactly. You could, yeah. You could you yeah. could put something out there that was seemingly innocuous and and get thousands of people around the world to do it. Rituals, mm-hmm. incantations, blood, rit- all sorts of things, sacrifices. Yeah. He's already made me yeah. decide to spend money every day. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Just I safe. haven't remembered to pray in a minute. I'm going to be honest. <laughs> I'm, I'm, a little, I'm a little worried about that. I just look, the thing is, if there was a demon out there, like uh, I like the crossroads demons analogy or, or not example and uh, supernatural. Mm-hmm. Basically, you go somewhere to, to the crossroads at midnight on wherever the fuck demon's going to show up, make a bargain with this guy, the sort of thing like save my baby's life and he's like all right but you know i get your soul in 40 years that sort of thing mm-hmm. if that were available we would do there'd be a line <laughs> there'd be a line <laughs> there'd be a line of people tick-tocking their deals right? absolutely like, oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> it no would be joke. a reality show where the the devil could make his own reality show with horns and like hell in the background here's last last season's losers and they're back there screaming and 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 eternal flames and people would come <laughs> right on the show and try that yeah that's yeah, terrible yeah. like basic macronomics tells us that as you increase the supply right this line that the deals they strike will get worse and worse you'll be <laughs> trading your soul for like a tank of gas <laughs> <laughs> it's a tank of uh, gas co- economy's getting out. tough buddy <laughs> 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 yeah, I got had by the crossroads demon because of inflation, soul inflation. <laughs> <laughs> Eventually, yeah, they shut off the markets because the supply of souls is too much and they don't need to intake anymore. You know, the exporting is already enough of a hassle. It's oh like, yeah, the demonic Fed is raising <laughs> rates. You can have you, you can only have so many people who are rulers of the world, you know, so like that, that's getting complicated. Yeah. yeah, you got the demons have to be like, who wants something like less, like way, way, way less? <laughs> like we'll take senator, a port, a port, a state of senator. I got plenty of souls around here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Hey, Any time, just let me know. We've, we've got a couple positions we can fill out. Uh, Midwest states, if you're cool with that. He's about to open up, I think. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You can be the president. Hear me out. <laughs> Somalia. <laughs> no, I'd rather I'd rather be a middle class person. First here. president of Somalia. <laughs> Dude, well, what I'm learning from this, you're saying the demons, they 
aren't traditionally scary in that way, which actually checks out with Christianity. Like they want to imbue you with pride or one mm-hmm. of the, the sins of, of thinking you can get ahead, but they also help people. They do things mm-hmm. like curing the blind by the thousands, curing the death, mm-hmm. the deaf by the, the death, thousands, the death, the yeah, de- yeah. curing the death. Yes. The death. So is this, does that make you give any more thought to the Mr. Mark of the Beast theory? Oh yeah, yeah. Are you, wait, Miss Mister Mark of the Beast. You're talking yeah. about the Mark of the Beast from Revelations, right? Yes, with Mister well, Beast. You've uh, seen those people on. <laughs> yeah, Mister Mark of the Beast. Have, have you had you the seen those people I did, on? I did have not. You had I should have picked yet. <laughs> have you taken it into your body yet? <laughs> have you taken, the, like, have you seen those people on Twitter? Beast? There's a bunch of people on Twitter who are. I should have known that's where that was going, but that blindsided me. Thank you, Taylor. (laughs) Yeah, there's a lot of people online that are convinced that he's trying to pull the wool over people's eyes by (laughs) pulling the wool off of their eyes. Uh, it, it's it's interesting. Now, I won't say to Mr. B specifically, uh, but, but so that, that man, I have to give a good transition before I talk about this, or else it could get clipped so easily. Yeah. But not <laughs> Mr. Beast, but insert another person is similar to a lot of Christian ideas around like the Antichrist, right? Like <laughs> the purpose of the Antichrist is to unite the nations. It's it's not that the devil needs to win. He just needs God to lose, right? That's that's his whole purpose. So mm-hmm. not, like for one, the devil's a losing battle. The devil knows it's a losing battle. He's just trying to get as many souls as he can while he's there. And what's the better way to get people's souls by, you know, tormenting them, making their neck spin around and like float off beds? Or to be an administer of wealth and, you know, knowledge, prosperity, what have you. Um, sure. And it's interesting to see, like, the shift that that had. Because previous to, I would say, Enlightenment era, all stories around demonic activity were about that. It was always about, like, deals with the devil that were made. Of, like, the devil was portrayed as, like, a, a false member of the clergy. Or perhaps a ruler or a king who'd come to people and give them, you know, wealth and wisdom. That Stories like Faust, you know, capitalize on a lot of those legends. Mm. But then after the Enlightenment era, after the in time where um, it, it like the religious tone shifted from, you know, g- God being prosperous, the devil being prosperous, but God being a true prosper in like the afterlife, once it shifted to these kind of black and white ideas of good and evil, like the devil, you know, pitchfork, horns, going around trying to torment people. Once that cultural idea shifted, then our stories around the devil shifted. It went from, you know, kind of this this person who wants to give you what you want into someone trying to trick you or someone nefarious looking to uh, cause harm or kill as many people as he can. But again, to Christianity and Judaism, that's that's not what that's not his MO. That's not what he's trying I to do. I could believe that about the mm-hmm. devil. That makes sense. If you've got some sort of figurehead, he's got he's got his own plans. Yeah. But what about a rogue demon? That seems more interesting to me. <laughs> so that, that's that's an interesting point. It's something I think about a lot with these things, because there are, again, a lot of the stories in the Bible around demon, like he's described or, or uh, around the devil. Satan's described as the morning star, right? He's described as beautiful, conniving, wise and stuff like that. But there's also stories about unwise demons seem like you said, rogue demons, just their own things. Like, for example, the story of the maniac from Gadir. Uh, he was a guy said to be to be possessed by thousands of demons uh, and he would wander the tombs. Himself. He had broken chains because the people of the village tried to chain him and he would snap the chains and run into the countryside. Uh, and whenever he approached Jesus uh, and Jesus looked at him and he fell to the ground, Jesus said, who art thou? And the maniac we replied, are legion. we are legion for we are many. Yeah, which is where that that's why that line gets pulled into every you know demonic story or whatever. Mm-hmm. And it says that uh, Jesus banished the demons from him. And the demons went into swine that were in the countryside and the swine ran off a cliff like they were crazed. So that's very different from like, you know, the conniving dealing devil. That's just like wild. That's what Constantine does. If you watch the movie Constantine with Keanu Reeves. Now, I'm sure Mm. they made this shit up for the fucking movie. They're like, so maybe we just throw the demon in like a pig and then kill the pig. (laughs) No, that's they threw it in a mirror and then shattered the mirror. Mm. I saw a movie recently with... um, who who used to who, uh, the gladiator guy? He's fat now. Um, Simon Russell, Russell Crowe. Crow. Russell Crowe. Russell Crowe uh, made this movie like this year called The Pope's Exorcist. Yeah, I'm sure it's yep. based on probably the last official Catholic exorcist or, or whatever. Probably I don't know, but it's you know it's a, it's a silly movie. But at one point he takes the 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 demon and puts it in a pig and then kills the pig. <laughs> and I I can't remember if it was a real demon but or if it was just to 
you know go through the ritual for the yeah yeah mentally ill kid there i i can't remember if they said which it was but i like both of those ideas a lot mm-hmm. i like the idea that we could maybe and you know that's what happens in the exorcist spoiler alert is father Karis, was it like, mm-hmm. like lets the demon into his body and then uh, and then throws himself Flies out, out the window, window. Yeah. yeah did he throw himself out or did the demon throw the body out because it couldn't stand to be within the pure body of the priest. I think the demon threw his body out. It couldn't cohabitate in a body so, you know, that also had God in it, perhaps. Yeah. I like because that. Like, because Pazuzu the... shows up in the sequels, right? So then, canonically, it well, would be that the demon threw him out. Uh, what's his name? Blatty is the writer, I think. Mm-hmm. It's got He's got three names. William blah, 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 Blatty or whatever the fuck. Exodus 3 is the true kind of sequel. Yeah, if you've yeah. ever seen that, it's tremendous. It's very it's good, movie. good. Good movie. Yeah. And, <laughs> and I don't know. The demon, of course, wouldn't tell you whether he lost or won in the first movie, I suppose. But if you know what happened, it seems like he pretty much won. The priest yeah. is dead. The demon isn't. <laughs> yeah. And but, the priest yeah. like suffers for, for all that time. <laughs> like like this, just having to watch behind the, the eyes as he like, kills children and yeah. does all sorts yeah. of like horrible things. Are there any world leaders now, maybe of like religious groups or whatever, that you look at and you're like a little wary of? Like, ah, oh, you seem you seem a little Taylor Swift, a little demonic. <laughs> I think Taylor Swift. She does have a good of reputation. The religious she did. She did the thing. She did of. the thing. <laughs> hmm. Did she? Is she? Wait, what does that thing mean, Wendy? Oh, it's it, that, that's a that, that's just an Illuminati. Or that means she's going to eat that redhead yeah. from uh, from Game of Thrones' pussy. That's what that means. She's I was mixing it up with Kyle. I thought that was Jonas the vagina sign. I, I, I see it slightly different. I, I, I thought it was a o- Only slightly. Ah, <laughs> 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 uh, yes, because it's evil. Because, you know, uh, <laughs> ox is dangerous. It, it is actually interesting. Is <laughs> it is interesting how much in, like, old folklore that like we you, like i know we're joking about it but in a lot of old folklore it was explicitly described as demonic like it's it's an evil it's a, it's part of women's curse like of eve that like a part of the devil in, is embedded with her there's a lot of imagery around like <laughs> this being explicitly demonic yeah oh that's that's no good <laughs> we've all seen alien okay and we know mm-hmm. the vaginas are bad they mean death what about the pope what's he up to do we need to keep an eye on him uh i'm not i'm not a big fan of catholicism i mean i've been open about this before i'm not a yeah. big fan of catholicism i don't like the idea of you have a religion and now you're like all right we got that whole god thing but let's let's just well, we can run it <laughs> let's yeah. put ourselves in charge you know so um I, w- I wouldn't say demonic or anything i think that uh Catholic beliefs still at its core align with Christianity as far as the beliefs of Jesus and redemption. It's everything after that that I'm not a fan of. Um, As far as I think there's a ton of religious groups from out history that I would describe, if not demonic, then like demon adjacent. Uh, Whenever they take like ideas of Christianity and completely flip them around, like, for example, Church of Satan, the Anton LaVey and all that posers jokes it's uh, the, like they were just edge lords the entire synopsis of the the uh satanic bible is if god real why bad thing happened that's like that's their whole that's all yeah. they got um <laughs> uh, so i i'm not considering him some mastermind or whatever but i think instead religious groups who have like taken like large groups of people and then been like yeah oh you like god and jesus that's cool but what if what if you did it this way what if you changed a bit like for example um uh, i would say jim jones uh i would definitely consider him adjacent uh i would consider um Ervil LeBaron. He was one of the early mem- members of Mormonism who brought a bunch of people to the desert, ended up being a serial killer, like had his cult kill mass numbers of people. Um, wow. Yeah. Was I, I was, I'd say when was like that? Better. I'm interested in that. Uh, Ervil LeBaron. Ervil Redenbacher. He's the, Ur- cor- he's the popcorn <laughs> guy. I want to <laughs> say it was... Hold on, let me just type it in. His name's Ervil LeBaron. People joke because if you take out the R, his name is Evil the Baron. Oh, uh, which... <laughs> It was, uh, yeah, like 1950s, 1960s, it happened. I'm glad you brought that up. Maybe we'll oh, you are ins- you? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, body modification. All right, I want to talk about ancient body modification. Maybe Wendigoon's ever had some of his creepy ass He's stories. an expert That's- you mentioned before. Because <laughs> like, one of those things I saw was that, I think it's that South American tribe that would practice the, uh, the skull elongation where they wrap mm-hmm. the baby skulls. And you can see photographs of babies that have had it done and their eyes are bulging. African, but what they end up with is um, these skulls that have been found down there and they look like 
X-Files aliens, okay? Like legitimately, and they're real. They're human skulls that through that practice have been made to look like this. Now, here's what all of the alien, ancient alien people always go to. They don't say those are alien babies because, of course, we can DNA test them or maybe, you know, the rest of it's biologically human, whatever. They say, why were they doing that? Why did they want to look like that? Who were they trying to emulate? Maybe there was, maybe there were some sort of alien overlords that were coming down, get, teaching them agriculture and uh, animal domestication. You know, the beginning of the skill tree and sim, mm-hmm. pottery. Yeah. And, uh, and, and, and they had these big heads and they were like, oh, if only we could look like the gods. Because imagine, if you will, because in Christianity and all of the Abrahamic religions, right? Like, like God looks like us. It's a key part of it. It's right there in the beginning somewhere. Yeah. If your God didn't look like you, <laughs> shit. Yeah. No. we are made in him his image. Yeah. That's Imagine it, yeah. if God didn't look like Whoa. us. How, how, is that how, a like, real one? No. no. I don't no, think that, no, that's, that's not a, a real that's one. That's wood wood that's wood wood well, I don't I don't know what Zach's trying to do to me here, but but they're real skulls. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you pull up that X Files alien autopsy footage from the nineties too? Like, like you know what's funny? It's like Kyle, I was like really I was putting like stock into what you were saying and like this image like undermined your story god damn it Zach. So you think it was some sort of some alien emulation of so i was thinking like oh i don't think that at all no 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 i'm just saying like i've often watched i've often watched those shows where that's their pitch like hey mm. this is why they did it because they want they want to tie everything that's a little peculiar in the past to aliens right and right. if you can like rope that one in to make that sort of a supporting argument for whatever other mm-hmm. kooky shit you've got, like chariots in the Bible being spaceships or whatever, like that's a good one to start with. For sure. There, I mean, the Bible talks about, Wendigo absolutely knows more about this, but like uh, you're familiar with like the Nephilim and, oh, and all of that. Oh, it, am it, I? Yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I would some love... audience members who haven't heard of it. Can you bring them up yeah, to speed? Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> so... All right, five, five minutes out the gate, we're in my zone. Let's go. Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> uh, so, in the Bible, there's mentions of things called Nephilim, which also off, often translates to giants or mighty men, uh, and they're mentioned in the Book of Genesis as being the children of what happened when the sons of God mingled with the daughters of men. So, some people think this to be the idea of righteous people with unrighteous people, but some take that literally and think it's the products of angels breeding with humans Mm -hmm. um there's mentions of angels coming down to earth so a lot of people draw that out of it see they got kyle it was uh, (laughs) (laughs) dangerous i'm gonna keep the head on taylor's next don't worry uh anyway so giants are mentioned in the bible uh there's some famous ones like goliath for example uh, there's a giant that uh, I believe it was Noah face. Noah faced giants in his age. Uh, so there's a few places that they're mentioned specifically, but there's this idea throughout the Old Testament that they were a reoccurring thing. Uh, mm. Like when it ever talks about they go to Canaan, that they see giants in the land of milk and honey that they have to wipe out. There's giants among the Philistines, what have you. So the idea is there's this uh, biblical record of giants, and there's also a record of giants throughout other written histories like pretty much every group of people either had a legend or history of giants somewhere in their culture they tend to pop up around the historical record um and the idea is since the bible is the oldest in my opinion the oldest debated between that and like zoroastrianism as being the oldest religion ever that it's the first evidence of giants existing and in the bible they're called nephilim so yes nephilim are like the the starting route for a ton of crazy i'm sorry to interject Series. We had a guest like two months ago arguing with me, telling me that Zoroastrianism wasn't the first religion. Do you remember that? Yeah, I, 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 I watched watch, that I episode. Do remember that. That, yeah. that, that was Aiden. That was Aiden. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that, that became more of an argument than I thought it would be. And that, that was just kind of like, oh, damn. Like now we're like getting heated over, <laughs> over like demons and shit. If, 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 it, me- if it means, uh, if it helps Kyle any. The theory that most people have, like myself, who believe that Christianity was, or like the Bible, Judaism at the time was first, is that Judaism and Zoroastrianism were simultaneous, that they kind of branched out at the same point uh, in the historical record. Which I have my own theories that Zoroastrianism is mentioned in the Old Testament as being other religions that are mentioned around the time of Abraham, but blah, blah, blah. Um, I, you see what I mean? You got me in my zone. No, that's, that's interesting. <laughs> well, I, I have been... 
admiring yeah this, i like this stuff. Uh, <laughs> this, this, this start. i was like it's cool when we have like a professional level guest <laughs> on the <this> show <laughs> i uh, like where i'm a sunday yeah. school teacher like you know a, a lot of what i do is talking to you know people my age and stuff they're like oh well you know christ wants us to live this way blah 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 but there's also a lot of all right kids so i found this verse in genesis i think it means that aliens came to israel blah 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 yeah i, I get to go on my whole rants and stuff so that's so fun. the bible so the bible is is kind of exacting when they give the um the dimensions of something like the ark do yes. they ever tell us about how tall these these giants are supposed to be because that's so important Yes, yeah, it does. Uh, whenever it mentions Goliath, which is, there's times that it mentions giants who stand with their waist at the height of man. That's more general. Goliath is specifically mentioned as, I think, nine and a half feet tall. Yeah, shit. Well, all right, all right, all right. Like Robert Wadlow what? size. Now, now when you say you? nine and a half feet, are you accounting for like their feet being tiny? Did they actually use their foot as a I, foot I, in I, that time? Because me- to be fair, these Hold are... On poorly fed jewish men that's true five thousand years ago <laughs> right. these are okay. small fellas well i think they use measurements... the measurement from your your elbow to your wrist or something like that they, called, they uh, use the, they, they use the measurement is? of cubits cubits the measurement cubits. of cubits uh if i remember it's yes it says that he was six cubits and a span um which a cubit's about a foot and a half so that comes out to a little over nine and a half feet Six yeah, see, see that's a, see that's the problem. So, like, obviously, there you're dealing with some exaggeration because, like, I I, I don't believe that in that time, even with like a pituitary thing or whatever, whatever <laughs> makes people gigantic, that he'd have like the diet capable of of ex- of surviving to manhood and being a, a nine foot tall being. <laughs> no, you, you know, know what would I mean? be funny is like if like that's entirely true. But Goliath was one of those pituitary giants. And so he, went, he went out to fight David, and they're like, there he is, the giant. And he has, like, crutches. He's like, oh. <laughs> Look at that beast. And they just bully him with a stone. <laughs> we were going to see if you guys had any medical intervention for him. God, don't kill him. Old school. Do you know about the, po- Do you know about the Potsdam Goliath. giants? That sounds familiar. So it's Pr- giants. It was a Prussian infantry unit in like 1675. All right. Now, <laughs> I, I can't remember if it was like the prince of Prussia or the king, whatever, the, the, the guy in charge, or at least in charge enough that he could have his own military unit at his whim, selected only the tallest men in the whole fucking Prussian empire. Yeah. Stupid question. What in where is the tech tree in 1685? Like it. Mm. Uh, they got like shitty um um guns like, like, like early imperial age. Muskets, you have access to trebuchets, like stuff, yeah. shitty guns. They probably there'd be a lot of cavalry and still like armor, I would imagine, and like silly hats with points on them, and uh, probably some lots you know swords and pikes and shit. Swords, pikes, and the occasional. Flag. We're a hundred years from the American Revolution, you know, and like guns being that good. Yeah, they were like, so, that's the time they were figuring out, like, we got to phase out armor because we're now making, like, muskets that can blast through stuff. Mm. Well, anyway, this, oh, go ahead. this go guy ahead. who I think was probably gay was, like, fascinated <laughs> with tall men, okay? It was, like, his jam. So he, like, searches the kingdom. It's and there's gay about quote, that. There's this quote from him. <laughs> hey, <he's>, watch <laughs> your mouth. <laughs> there's this great quote. And he's, he's you like, oh, you can't have a harem always. of tall men or it's gay. <laughs> <laughs> he's got this great quote i want zach to find it well i should i've given some contact mm-hmm. clues to his identity i just can't remember the fucking you know prince of prussia's name but he had he said something like keep your 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 this keep your that give me a tall man <laughs> right. Right, you and, may be on to something but, but he was like this would be a good video i think because like this regiment apparently was really tall guys because he searched the whole like country and got on and he even had a breeding program where he was trying to like pair up the tallest women and the tallest men to you know make an even yeah. taller regiment he never used them in battle because he was so beloved they were so beloved what on earth I, i'm looking huh. at his wikipedia the, the height of the king who organized this five three and so imagine how monstrous this battalion, and apparently the minimum height was 6'2", which back yes. then is enormous. Like, yes. like uh, Today, 400 6'2 years is usually ago, the tallest guy in a room. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Like, if you're 6'2", would... 400 years ago, like, you're probably starting conversations walking I bet he, he, he would Find us the them. average height for the time, Zach, because that's important. But I would guess that you're like Harley, essentially. You know, like, you're, you're like a 6'5", six, 6'6", six, six guy, like... 
everybody's like, oh Seven shit, one. one of them are here. Yeah. Yeah. You, like they'd think there's something like wrong with you. Or they'd be just like jealous of like, wow, that guy gets to eat every day. No, it'd be hard to be like again. I think it would be there's a reason people used to be smaller and because it it didn't work to be big. Like a big man can't like work. All right, if you're five five, you do a day's work that gives you enough grain to support your five foot five body or whatever from the the boss. I just don't think the six foot six guy can do enough work to get him enough grain to to like make up the difference. You know what I mean? He's not working hard enough to get enough grain more than the other guy. We're all getting fed the same. I wonder if we like, I wonder if we got shorter after agriculture. Is that something I made like when we like that people were taller that like some hunter or maybe this is like some other thing. They found like hunter gatherer tribes that are pretty tall because they ate like so much meat, like Neander, or I guess Neanderthals are like a kind of a different thing. Giant yeah, it was the circles Nephilim. back in. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> no circles back in. Does him. that mean the angels are black? No. <laughs> what? Angels are, are it's a it's a total misconception that angels are even people, man. You've read I the Bible. That. You've you've seen the orb of eyes. I had to make a black show. The the uh <laughs> the <athleticism. laughs> I know it's not theologically correct. <laughs> Shit, no, see, that's up. not canon. The, the, yeah, the the the, the ophanim, right? The canon. The giant, oh, I love calling the Bible eyes. canon. I'm a, so I had something I, I wanted to talk to Wendigoon about. Oh, we can oh. jump in with that. So, I've I've I know from your channel you you're very interested in these mystical woodland creatures and things. Very not just woodland hmm. all over the place. Of all those just. you've researched, do any of them at all like? trigger a thought in your mind to be like this would be real or are you mostly at the end of it like ah, so, i can't buy in i i do think that there is a large case for a lot of like ocean creatures for one right so i'm going to leave those out of it because that's cheating right okay mm, um okay. as far as like so I, i'm from eastern tennessee right so mm-hmm. I spend a lot of the time in the woods do a lot of camping and there's some there's some weird stuff that goes down you just don't explain like just some some noises, some carcasses you find that you're like, this is uh, not right. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm also like, you know, a Christian, a Sunday school teacher. So I also have the thought in my head, like, maybe it's just a demon. That makes me feel better for some reason. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so if there is any like supernatural or cryptid, so to speak, creature that would exist, I would probably say it would be in line with a lot of mythologies that go along the lines of like the rake or something like that. And I don't think maybe any one specific one of them is real, just maybe like some kind of creature that's unaccounted for, just something yeah. that isn't quite on the record yet. Uh, sure. it, it's, it's not an entirely out there, like, you know, Bigfoot with antlers and giant wings, as much as I love the Mothman, probably mm-hmm. not. Um, <laughs> but just something that we're not entirely aware of yet. That, may, that makes yeah. some noise at night that we yeah. don't pay attention to. Yeah. I, well, that's totally I, I'm, I'm also like I also lean toward that not like the biblical demon which is a fucking corrupted angel of the lord <clears> but <throat> like the idea of some sort of like I don't know other dimensional fucking weird being that's kind of here but not really and uh-huh. like maybe sometimes it influences our world in some weird way even if it's just being a cold spot or screaming real loud in the woods an in betweener <laughs> so to speak yeah yeah i don't know um i've never seen or heard anything that 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 i couldn't explain with my ears or eyes one way or another um you know i i remember when we were on our little uh survival trip that time with you, you myself and chiz and patrick our cam man and uh we heard some people way in the distance being si- i'm gonna say they were being silly and partying by a fire because that's not terrifying. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because what we heard was, Wee! it sounded like there might be some deliverance shit going down, you know, yeah. like, like, like they just had like, fuck the guy or something. Or like, a demon ritual of sorts. You, you never know, but it was so far away, but we're in like a some silent Bohemian forest. All you hear is crickets and, you know, all the forest life and, and, and quietness. So like a person's voice in those, those hills, those mountains carry so far, but it was scary. It was, I was glad we had guns. I was, I was like, oh, I'm not worried about it at all. We've got fucking guns. I kind of hope they come over here and start some shit. <laughs> Actually, <laughs> let's go see what they're yelling about. <laughs> you, you better hope that, it, uh, that it's like a physical being. 
your guns are going to be nothing against demons. Well, then we've got a cameraman. We're all millionaires now. We're the first go- first ghost hunters to actually find a ghost. The like reason that, that no, if medals if, are going to be on us like Soviet commanders, it's going to be nuts. If we the only we thing we know, ghost, the, the only thing we know for sure about ghosts is that if you like see one verifiably, like they probably are going to kill you, right? No, There'd be a lot more people with better stories. We're the first men to beat up a ghost in the forest mm-hmm. of Georgia. And, <laughs> and our boy Patrick filmed it. We're cutting shiz out of this. It's a union thing. Me, <laughs> fucking, what he took the fucking, he took his tent flap, his rain, his rain guard, and choked the fucking ghost out. There was so much cosmic energy imbued in it from his anger earlier that day that he could he could choke a phantom with it. That and makes he, sense. Yeah. And we take a we take a True. phantasm like, like prisoner. We'd be the first guy. So I have no fear of a phantasm or ghost. I, I I would love to die that way if someone records it. It'd be cool. That's how I'd love to die. It would be cool. I'd like to be attack? taken out a long time from now. Like at ninety one. There's no way I'm making it to ninety. At seventy one. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the thing. I think people that are our age, we still do that thing where 70 is so goddamn old, but every day 70 gets younger, if that makes sense. Like like the people who will be seven 70 year olds today are way better help help wise than 70 year olds 10 years ago. And on and on and on and on and on, right? Like there's a reason that like, like we keep living. Yeah, of course. I thought we were getting fatter at a faster rate than all that. But the healthcare system, like, like the life expectancy keeps going up. Has it gone? It hasn't started going down, has it? It's always it I don't think we, we've never been like well, that. COVID great doesn't count with uh okay. compared to like a lot of Europe. Like if a bomb right? went off, you know, yeah, yeah right. down, so <laughs> it did. But I don't think Europe has, yeah, Europe doesn't have longer <laughs> life expectancy because they have like way better well, they do have better medical better medical care than us, but I think it's mostly that they're not all big fat fucks. Like uh, way lower. Think about all the problems that being obese cause, and then like make a population like ours that's super fucking mega obese. It's gonna be. It's gonna cause super it. fucking mega obese. Just it's a lot of obese. Yes. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just, just saying that obese. by the time you're, what I was getting at is, yeah. Why like, can't why they the... just be a normal guy who's class one obese? <laughs> like, like, <laughs> but when you're 70 Stage that will be a very least. different 70 probably than the 70 you've pictured like yeah you're how old are you me 31 40 years from now we're talking about like 2060 something like like, like that is a long time yeah, from yeah. now like, like I, I feel like we've got the spaceships then right like we're on mars and our and our mars cars like it's 70 right like we'll get to see it then they won't let us I, go up there but our, our your grandkids will get to go. Twenty sixty, we're... Kyle will and have maybe one of my dogs. <laughs> we'll <rely laughs> <on> my dog. <laughs> I mean, I will say Kyle mentioned snakes. Uh, one of the few official snake handling churches is about twenty minutes from my home, and I do know people who go there. It's the one. If you kept up with it a couple of years ago, the pastor died because he yeah. was bit to death by snakes during a service mm-hmm. um i am pretty close to one of those so that is a thing around here <laughs> what a re- um, it would have been it would have been but, funny if you just said car accident and just moved along fucking <laughs> 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 moving the, the pastor of that snake handling thing died as soon spider as you bite said, yes. as as said, it was, all you had to say was it was the one that and i was like I bet it was the one where someone died because they get bit by a goddamn fucking poisonous snake because they wave oh. them around there that's probably what happened. Those yeah. people deserve it. I love when it happens. They should be refused treatment. <laughs> so um, it's interesting. I did like a, uh, it was for my occult video I did a while back. I looked into like how that started and everything. And it actually didn't uh, begin until the 50s. And there was this one evangelist that went around and he was specifically quoting in uh, the New Testament whenever Jesus is talking to the disciples and he tells them, if you do work in my name, uh, no harm will ever befall you. And he says, you will walk through fire and not be burnt, blah, blah, blah. You will pick up serpents, serpents and not be, bit. not be bit. Yeah, you'll pick up. And the what Jesus was saying there was like, if you're doing my will, then you're going to be protected. Don't worry about that. He was not saying that, yeah, well, if you believe in God, just like grab a bunch of snakes. You can literally. Around. You can it's, literally it's like pick up serpents. Pill. Right. Kids, I'm talking about children, eight to 12 years old. Listen to me. You can literally fly, jump off your roof and fly into the night. Like, literally. <laughs> yeah, that whole thing. Yeah. announcement, I have realized and learned the definition of the word literally. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, that.
that guy who started the whole thing uh, died during a service in, I think it was Alabama, um, while he was handling snakes. Um, but that that's where like that whole ideology comes from and everything. Yeah. I've I didn't never know it was that recent. I knew that people yes, yeah, still it, do it. You know, it, I thought, it, I thought it, that uh, it had been around for uh, forever. I mean, I knew that people still do it, but I just thought it was old. So oh. it, it has been done in like old societies and cults, but not in the evangelical Southern Baptist right. way until like post World War II. There's a lot of stuff about the evangelical movement that happened in the South post World War II, things like that. Um, the older ideas of like colonial America, the idea of the uh, penitent sinner who needs to like earn their holiness to stand before God that started to make a big comeback around the same time. And a lot of stuff like that still exists in the South to some degree. Uh, but yeah, snake handling wasn't a thing in Christian churches until after world the war two. Yeah, I had no idea. I figured that was an old practice. Very interesting. Yeah. Well, I mean, there's always been like cults and societies that have like carried snakes and stuff, but just and, not in that um, attitude, at least, at least not to any degree that it was like a known practice uh, I believe right. the one nearby that does it is a Pentecostal church. Um, I know Pentecost. I know there's holiness churches that do it. Um, things. I don't think any Baptists. It's more so like the uh, spiritual or uh, with experience based uh, belief systems. Um, right. They're the ones who are primarily a thing with that. Um, I could I could but, get into um, a, a snake religion. What's the survival rate for their like <laughs> high admit, ranking? Cal had a one eighty. He's immediately like, yeah, actually, it's kind He's of like, cool. yeah, I'm down. I, I don't uh, want to like handle the snakes. I, I think maybe like some snake worship, though. Oh, maybe. I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, that makes more sense. Yeah, gotcha. What, what were you saying? Make, I mean, like handling snakes in church, like it's kind of like daring God, isn't it? Well, that's what that's what I was telling them about while mm. you were gone. Uh, it's from whenever Jesus told the disciples that you can pick up snakes and not be bit. Uh, they're just like, oh, okay, he said so. They took it Let's literally. They took I it mean, literally, just yeah. latching on to that. Of all things, there is. Uh, it's actually kind of interesting if you look at a lot of a more like. I don't want to say orthodox. Uh, it's more so like the American uh, traditional religious movements. A lot of the branching off that happened with those literally came from like one or two verses in the Bible, where mm -hmm. they're like, "Oh, th this is our thing now. Let's hyper focus on this part." Right, and then they kind of focused with that. Uh, as they went through the years and that kind of developed and became its own thing. I wanted to ask you, Wendy Goon, <laughs> what to get very serious, not really, but like, right. what is, cause I know you're, you're a Christian. What is the point of like the Christian sex <laughs> where you're like, I think I have more not in common with you than in common with you. Like, mm, cause yeah, like, like most like Christians I've talked to about like Mormons, will say like they've got the gist of it but they are way out of line on a lot of but mm -hmm. you know they kind of got the, the core a bit right other than the whole like other testament thing yeah 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 i uh as far as mormons go i'm pretty absolutely removed from them uh <laughs> every, <laughs> everyone that i've talked to i have absolutely no idea what they're talking about uh it's like what did you just make that part up which they're like yeah yeah, they uh, did. <laughs> yeah pretty much yeah that's the vibe um uh, but yeah the uh them definitely far removed from things like jehovah witnesses and all that anything that involves new revelations so like you know you had the bible you had like which the New Testament, which is the most recent part of the Bible, is entirely written by people who were alive and either were with Christ or were friends with the disciples who like wrote letters to them or whatever. So that's mm -hmm. like Jesus. And then if any religion is like, yeah, and then 800 years later, there was a second part. That's where I'm like, no, no, I don't, <laughs> I don't play ball with that. Because uh, at that mm -hmm. point, they're just adding stuff for their own, you know, whatever objective they want to get across. Are uh, you yeah. smirching David Smith? Uh, yes, I am. A, matter of fact, a little, yes, Good, a lot. because that was the <laughs> greatest con man this side of the Mississippi. Yeah, this see, side, yeah. both sides of the Mississippi. Because <laughs> he got booted to the other side. You know, <laughs> that, Fucking shit. Oh that, but, but him, uh, I, I don't, I'm not Catholic. Catholics are closer because, you know, they still believe in Christ and all that. Not a fan of like the church as an office or, you know, the, the Pope or the orders of the priest and all that. Uh, but if it, 
like if you believe in christ then you know we've got something to talk about but there's a lot of people yeah. who they they had a lot of asterisks to that <laughs> term a lot with, of with new ideas thing, like like i you know most of my family's catholic but like the whole praying yeah. like to, to like including mary in your prayers was always to me like what are what are we doing here like there's no part in the new testament that says to include mary it seems like this is a bunch of pomp and circumstance that they included kind of like the pharisees and sadducees back in the day to keep <laughs> people kind of constricted based on ritual than by based on and by social constraints than by anything else like the same way confession like have you, if you've seen the bullshit people say now about like confession, actually, like the reason it's a thing is because like the priest is meant to be like someone who helps you through problems. And it's like, no, that was not the impetus of confession. <laughs> the impetus of confession was a way to goad an entire community into spilling secrets to a central position that then could use that information to control. Like, like, no, the, mm. literally in the fucking Bible. Jesus says, what did Jesus say? What, did he say that when you pray, yeah. go into public loudly and raise your arms? No, <laughs> Jesus said, when you pray, do not go into public and raise your arms and scream as the Pharisees and Sadducees do. Instead, go into your room in private. Just you and the Lord. Isn't that what Jesus said? I, I was under the impression that it, that was kind of spelled out in, in the middle of John, but I guess not, or no, Luke. Like, it's, I, I really, that always fucking turned me the wrong way about Catholicism is like, it takes all of what Jesus came back to do, which is fulfilling the covenant, and making it so that the separation of fabrics and the not eating of pork, the shellfish, all this stuff was fulfilled. It's not to be followed anymore. And to tack on an additional layer of like, oh, now you have to worry about paying money to get out of uh, to get your relatives out of purgatory. Like that's that's a despicable perversion of if you believe in Christ and, and you believe that's what he came to do. That doesn't really gel. And I'm not even a religious person, really. Wow, like, that I, was cool. Hey, it's Sunday school, Taylor popped out there. That was mm -hmm. nice. I like that. I want <laughs> some <laughs> consistency there. And I don't, I don't like, and mo uh, the Catholics I know are good people. The vast majority of them are Christmas and, and Easter Catholics who don't care about it, who don't do, yeah. people don't know this. Most Catholics don't do confession. Like they, they don't go and do that shit. Of course anyway, not. You know, but like, yeah, the, the whole impetus of it is like gross. It was a way to get dirt on people who trusted you and then use it to, for material gain fucked up is that true yeah. i get all my yeah. information from the passion mm -hmm. of the christ on, on yeah the it is 100 percent true <laughs> yeah no she, gibson will set you straight <laughs> yeah people who get like upset like listening to just totally bad information and not able to contribute like <laughs> this, some people have to listen to our show and be like no that's not how fuck man that's not how any of this works and then we're all three like yeah that checks mary out. is the blessed mother how dare you, you know? oh, they'll Dude, be I, I will Don't get worry. someone i guarantee i will get multiple people being like hey you misunderstood this this and this about catholicism and that's entirely possible i'm not catholic but i think i, I think i'm right about a couple of those core things frankly <laughs> and i will debate the pope about it i put me in the ring with the pope i, <laughs> I, 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 I will I'll, dominate I'll the pope i went to sunday school i know what to yeah. do these gonna he be would. i know what questions it. he'll He's, ask your your conjurations can't save you here magician <laughs> you can't be saved with your machinations from the deep <laughs> from from the spirit realm the fact Go that ahead, we've never seen the pope <laughs> cast a spell or do anything even vaguely magical really casts Wait, does he claim it, to be magical yeah he well with, like, he convenes directly with god almighty yeah i know that claim. he does claim that at times actually not every pope claims that i think pussies i know less than anybody <laughs> not if they're not pope. even claiming that anymore <laughs> what are we doing here like what are you aren't i right not every pope claims well, yeah, I have no, the, exactly the, the funniest one was during covid Whenever uh, the Pope, they tweeted or put out an announcement that was like, during COVID, you don't have to go to a church for confession. You can just confess your sins directly to God. And everyone you was zoomed. like, no, we're going to zoom call this. Hundreds of years of war over this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there were centuries of death and destruction Martin over this Luther, very issue. Martin Luther is spinning in his grave right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> we need to find him and we can solve our power problems. <laughs> Show him that tweet. Yeah. That, I hate, that I hate ridiculous. the whole idea of the Pope. And, uh, and and like his cadre of wizards, like like the yeah. whole thing is so absurd. Like the fact that they still dress like that, it's like why haven't they why why like haven't we that. stopped and said anything? Like 
Dude, I'm on know, the other you side. You if everyone could dress like that in the big flowy gowns, I could quit my diet. The hat, Woody. Look yeah, at that. It's hat. like the Saudis. Quit my he has a staff. <laughs> Draco Malfoy's dad wasn't as Steph over the top is as the Pope is. Baller. The hat? Oh my god, no more height envy. The cloak? Who needs a sick pack when you dress like a ghost? I'm so like I, I cannot believe how much I'm on your side with this one. Like you're <laughs> you are you're attacking the absolute coolest part of Catholicism, which is the Vatican, <laughs> the outfits, the pomp and circumstance. Uh -huh. Like the whole like, like this color too. smoke goes out of the, the the pillars create white smoke or black smoke and then when it turns white we've picked a new pope. That kind of stuff is fun. It's Game of Thronesy, man. Like that. Oh, oh, <laughs> do, you know do you know what they do to make sure the pope is dead? The fucking poke him. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I can't remember exactly which which kind of like up the shits on my, my, you, my you loudly place. say hmm. Naked boys, <laughs> <laughs> and then when he Felipe, doesn't, go and then when you that. don't notice a, a very expensive tent of, of Egyptian cotton forming, you, you know that he's he's finally. Passed. I hope it's something really ordinary like a sternum rub. I did. I'm gonna I'm gonna get comments about this. I didn't I think say that. Tailored. <laughs> yeah. It was me, right. but he told me to say it. For the show. No, no, no. <laughs> I communicate directly with God. He told me to say it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I think I think they stab him um, or something like that. I, I watched a YouTube video the other day. I, uh, maybe they don't do it as, as much, but the, they did something silly. They like whacked him on the head with a coconut or something. Oh, that reminds me. Um, oh, I read about this whole thing today. I want to get the terminology right, but I'm not going to. It's it, what it is. It's these. It's the religion that props up in um, some of those some uncontacted tribes um, where they. I'm going to break it down as well as I can from memory here. Okay. So, so the deal is that within these like uncontacted tribes, they have this sort of pecking order amongst the men who are sort of, you know, the ruling class anyway, where like we give each other gifts. And, but the thing is we all kind of come from the same place, the same village. So nobody's ever going to like, like ruin the gift giving by having like an iPod. You know what I mean? Like I'm going to give you my extra coconuts and you're going to give me like your, all the berries that you found yesterday. And, and so in that way, I'll never be what they call like a dirty man or something like that, which is someone who is indebted very much more in this gift giving tradition they have where like you should like the, the head guy there is the guy who's given everybody a gift. Everybody owes him because he's given everybody one more gift than they've given him essentially. So like what they would do, they would meet these like uh, the, these guys on boats and these the, and, and they would show up with shit from a factory <laughs> in England or America. And they'd be like, yeah, what do you want? Like 50 of these dolls. And it just like ruins their like sense of worthiness. And so they start viewing not the white men um, as their God who have this overabundance of like factory produced goods that they can't even fathom. Mm -hmm. They believe that there's a religion of cargo drops where like God drops cargo yeah, yeah. and gives it to people. And through either, um, because either they were bad or because God, like, accident, there was an accident. These men have been gifted more. So we need to pray to the God that we'll get our cargo shipment from the sky of, like, earthly goods so that we can no longer be dirty men who are indebted mm -hmm. to those those Frenchmen who came the other day and, like, gave us all a, a basket Ooh, of fruit eat. The Lord has blessed us with sour cream and onion chips. <laughs> <laughs> did, did, did you even imagine there could be a flavor more than original? <laughs> I had my mind blown by original for weeks, and then they come and Man, the Lord is great. The Lord is a wonderful God for giving us. This. Have you ever have you ever heard of Cape Cod chips? These are the finest chips I have ever had. Hot and vinegar. They are a flavor you would not anticipate being as tasteful as it is. <laughs> I like, you that's ever the had original starry soda. <laughs> it is not good. <laughs> no, that's, the original, that's, that's the original potato chip flavor, you know. Not, original? not salt, but salt and vinegar. Oh. I didn't know that. So that I was didn't either. Original. I just kind of made it up. Uh, you got me this time. <laughs> God God damn it, dude. Yeah. Did he have you, Taylor, or was it just me? No, no, he got me on that one. Oh, like, was, <laughs> you know, because it's preservatives. <laughs> yeah, it, it maybe had I was to like, keep oh, those yeah, potatoes like, fresh. Time. Uh, it did make Probably it does it did make sense made, to me. It still makes sense. It might be true. Man, if <laughs> hell is real, fuck.
Like, <laughs> I, 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 dude, dude, you wish, you wish. Dang, that's wish. crazy. <laughs> it would almost be better that if if hell were real, were real, because like maybe eventually, like God and the devil, like truce it out, and we'll all live in some some other place. We'll move the suburbs of hell. But like <laughs> the alternative, the you know, like 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 uh, like Marietta. And it, it, then yeah. you know, people get there. Um, it, it, but 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 the alternative is just you know what the rea- the reality that, that we all you know it goes black. It's all for nothing. I don't know. There could be something neat. Not a thing. We don't know. For us, come not on. For, we're like, so not awful. For There's nothing good for us. Yeah. Look for good here's, people. The host here's how in I know. A little we're not <laughs> like, like, like just us as, a, as beings. Like like we're not decent uh, enough to deserve anything after this. I think we're all pretty decent. As a species? No, I meant the four of us. <laughs> like, <laughs> like none I mean, of us are like shitty. I people. think I think God's we're well. Gonna be like, I'm a big fan of the show, and you're not welcome here. Yeah. <laughs> I think we're well. I think like, we're well meaning, but I. Don't what know if what I? What if I get to heaven and God's like, there are a few problems with the way I was oh. uh, represented. On the, <laughs> I have been Indian the entire time. I'd be like, and I'd be There's like, a lot of head bobbing. Yeah, I, you are not allowed in the in the eternal <laughs> paradise of my convenience <laughs> store. <laughs> you step through the pearly beaded curtain. It's fucking yeah. <laughs> God, smells in here. <laughs> I don't want to go. <laughs> is, that, is that cabbage? Is that cabbage? <laughs> yes, there were many problems with the way I was portrayed in the Bible. <laughs> they said my apostles' names were like Luke and John. It was John Aresh and Luke Rum. <laughs> like, I don't know. <laughs> Fuck. Luke of us. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Hello, I, will, I am very interested in saving your eternal soul. I would like to talk to you. No, do not hang up. Do not hang up. <laughs> <laughs> See, that would be better. Like, 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 like Hindu Stanny, um, fucking, uh, 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 f- uh, phone, phone seller guy is, is pref as a god is preferable to, you know, reality. Yeah. He'd at least be fun and like you you'd like get a, get a laugh. I love that. I love that when kids when kids would would ask in church like, so wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. my dog's not going to heaven because like parents would tell that lie just like Santa Claus. I'll mix that in. Oh, like, yeah. yeah, your goldfish will be in heaven, and they're like, nah, they're not going to heaven. But don't worry, neither are you. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to see that once. They're like, just so you know, like this is all off. I shouldn't say these mean things in front of Wendy. Dude, I remember he, the he way. They, like, 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 like he, you're, he's probably a deacon or something. He's on the take. He can't be part of this. <laughs> no, he's, he's, he's like a, a, a he's like a capo. <laughs> he's a capo. <laughs> in in like the the Muslim board meeting, they've got like Wendigoon up there where they're like to get rid of this guy. <laughs> this is the one that teaches the little ones. <laughs> yeah, I assume that's how religions work. You got the, yeah, the Jews. Yeah. Yeah, the, the like Muslims, they, 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 they all have a yeah, board room. They all have a war room. They're yeah, figuring we're, it we're out. all trying to actively kill each other. Yeah, exactly. That's all trying to win. And then and the not, Mormons not, are like, not, "We don't even have to play. We're gonna have a hundred kids apiece." <laughs> <for you." laughs> no, it's 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 no. It, it feels mean because I like you. I just don't. No, no, know. bro, bro. You know what they say: hate the sinner, not the sin. Or is it the other way around. Look, I've been a terrible Christian for years based on misunderstanding. Hey, fuck you! And then you suck a oh, dick. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nah, you're good, bro. I'm not offended at all. I've heard way worse. You're good. There's, yeah. pl- there are multiple people in my comments who want me dead over it, so it's fine. Oh, it's I'm fine. sure. This is okay. Yeah. yeah. One hundred yeah. bags. Yeah, it would be how it be. <laughs> like I said, we have the war room. You know, we're plotting it out too, so mm-hmm. it's fine. Yeah. The church has well, surface-to-air missiles we're taken care of. <laughs> you know what religion's going to do really well is the next one to release like a DLC. Like, <laughs> like more that's what stuff. Mormons did. That's literally what the Mormons and, did. And, and how are the Mormons doing? Mormons are what? That's fastest fair. growing religious sect on earth for a long time running. Granted, that's there's fair. a little that's finagling fair. there with percentages because, like, sure, there's sure. so many, Dude, like, yeah. Christian Catholics fucking, are not going to explain RM- in a year. <laughs> Dude, Catholicism was ruined by RMT. <laughs> <laughs> dude i fucking hate oh. skill-based matchmaking with, uh, they're putting me up How's with these work? really difficult to trick priests in confession <laughs> dude the moving around of the catholic priest is like the nail in the coffin if you ask me for the whole hierarchy of that religion because you can't explain it away you can't say oh yeah turned out there was this 
there are a lot of priests that we didn't know. You know how, who's to say? You know, there are, nobody's looking over a priest's shoulder. We, we trusted them too. But it's like, no, dude, for like the the last 50 or 80 of years of recorded history that we have, where we actually started writing shit down for real, like y'all been doing it constantly and hiding it and like relocating them. I love the Bill Burr joke, like where he's like, like, like you treat him like one of those killer whales. Just moved him to another theme park like he didn't just kill three trainers. <laughs> it's, it's, it's absurd. Like, it's like true. when you I'll say this, if I was running like like forget a religion, if I had a fucking like fan club, theme park, not whatever the fuck, where we're all like supposed to be doing things the Kyle way or something, and I found out that like one of the little Kyles was over here, like do it. Oh my god, we gotta get him. We gotta make it public. Let's Maybe we need to go back to some of that old school stuff we always talk about. I'm the Pope, yeah. right? Let's get him up here to the Vatican. Don't I make Little the rules? Code of Hammurabi stuff. Like yeah. Intense Seems like stuff. Eye for an Could eye. the Pope, does the Pope have the power? My we guess have to molest does. him now. I yeah. bet the Pope, I bet, I bet the Pope has the legal ability to like extradite somebody from another country and execute them in the Vatican City. I bet, like, like, like he could do that, right? I mean, I bet he um, could. Uh, what, did, I mean, what did Taylor say? Rectory? He said corrective. Yeah, the rectory. <laughs> he said corrective. corrective. Right. Yeah. <laughs> As if they're going to like punish him with what he did, which seems, you know, very eye, eye for an eye. For an eye. The yeah, rectory right, yeah. or the rectory? Yeah. That's what yes, I was getting both. Yes. <laughs> I like that. Yeah. <laughs> the, the, the rectory. Yeah, what he uh, thought he heard it. Have. <laughs> no, no, I know, I know a bunch of like Catholic people who are like, yeah, my church has. You know, they, they've decided that they don't like what the Vatican's doing and they're separating themselves for it and doing their own thing. It's like you're you're this is Protestant with extra steps. You're yeah, just well, going the long this way. This is around, Protestantism yeah. with Okay, then you're not a, okay, then you're not a Catholic anymore. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's it's like just okay, so you, just we, so you know you're not a we, Catholic anymore. We've been on that. We have been I'm gonna on report you. Just, I, and yeah. I'm telling the Pope. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, honestly, like changed. canonically no, but, yeah. canonically Catholicism has moved a bit in that direction, like not a bit, enormously in that direction over the past couple centuries. Like, mm -hmm. I think in most Catholic churches, it's accepted now. Like, you can just confess to God. Yeah. Like, that. Yeah, we, that's allowed. To, Do you know how many people were like... each other over yeah. it. Yeah. Do you know how many people were, like, burned alive? Yeah, literally. Saying, like, <laughs> you can confess to God directly! <laughs> and they're like, burn him! Burn him on the stake! But I think instead, religious groups who have, like, taken like large groups of people and then been like, yeah, oh, you like God and Jesus. That's cool. But what if, what if you did it this way? What if you changed a bit? Like, for example, um, I would say Jim Jones. Uh, I would definitely consider him adjacent. Uh, I would consider um, Ervil LeBaron. He was one of the early mem members of Mormonism who brought a bunch of people to the desert, ended up being a serial killer, like had his cult kill mass numbers of people. Um Wow. Yeah, I, was, I'd say when was that? Better. I'm interested in that. Uh, Ervil LeBaron. Ervil Redenbacher. He's the <laughs> he's the popcorn guy. I want to <laughs> say it was. Hold on, let me just type it in. His name's Ervil LeBaron. People joke because if you take out the R, his name is Evil the Baron. Oh, uh, shit. Which, <laughs> it was. Uh, yeah, like 1950s, 1960s. It happened. Um, so okay, there, there was this... way more reason than I thought you were going to say. Yeah, there was this big schism within Mormonism. Uh, I believe the disagreement was over polygamy, if I recall correctly. Not a lot of people know this, but core Mormonism, like the parts of it that exist now, are actually super anti-polygamy. Uh, it's that there's a bunch of offshoots who have left the church because they're pro-polygamy. Um, and Herbal LeBaron was one of them. So he brought like him and all his sister wives out to the middle of the desert. I want to say it was Nevada, Nevada, New Mexico, one of those. Um, and there was a bunch of other Mormon leaders who would preach against him, who would say that he's a, you know, he's a, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, yeah, well, that too. Uh, but the, whenever someone is trying to divert oh. people away from the church. Um, like a false prophet. kind of. But guy. yeah, yeah, yeah. Like he was a false prophet. He was a, a heretic. That's the word I'm looking for. Heretic. Uh, that he was trying to push everyone away from the truth so he would have his members like roll over to that other church at night and they would like stab preachers to death they were there were there was one point that he was going to go on trial uh the the big event of Ervil LeBaron's life is right before he was finally caught um there was like three people that were going to go on uh, testify against him and within an hour 
all three of them got executed like around the state at different locations. He had planned it that at the same time there would be men in each town. Like one got ki- shot with a shotgun, another was stabbed to death. Like it was like a Breaking Bad level hit, like all at the same time. Because uh, because Irvin, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, accusers. <laughs> Because Herbal LeBaron had such a grip on his followers. That's what happens so. to liars, Taylor. The Lord, <laughs> the, the Lord uh, struck them down. They were smited by God Almighty for Smoked. their filthy lies about the great Kevin Spacey. I'll tell you what I would sell my soul to a cross were, uh, crossroads demon for. Go back and have make Kevin Spacey fix that last season. I want to see what was going to happen. Uh, for I, one I season what, of a show that was one already season bad. of a show that was already downhill i want to know what doug was going to do i want to know if he was going to kill that that bitch wife of his i want to know i need to see it bring kevin back hashtag safe spacey <laughs> <laughs> i think that's all of his accusers are gone. either dead or gone and i'm not sure that reason. proves his innocence like you're implying <gasps> It, it does not. Dude, the well list of this guy's act. wives and accomplices <laughs> on Ervil LeBaron is insane. Like, yeah, he yep. had like 60 kids and they included in that and also raised a couple of stepkids mm-hmm. as as though they're like pumping his tires a little bit here. It's like, Thank you. it seems, it, seems like a bad guy killed on behalf of the cult. That's a whole column in this enormous table. Killed on behalf of the cult. Why, 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 why? Like a lot of yeses that they yeah. killed on behalf of this cult. So how did... So how old was he old enough him? that his... Here's my question, because this, this is... I'm imagining... I know y'all haven't seen it, but that... that um, the, 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 the TV show about this, where the guy had... Uh, his under the Banner with, of Heaven. Um, and were his children, like he had 60 kids or whatever, does that mean he had like an army of sons? Because yeah, you can imagine did, when that would that's be very most formidable. Of the killing. Yeah. If yeah. you had 20 grown man sons, that would be difficult to deal with the guy who has 20 sons who are like yeah. 18 or older. Yeah. That yeah. would be a problem. Right? Not as difficult as a guy who has 41 sons. <laughs> of- <laughs> I, grew up, I grew up without a big brother, but I hear about this circumstance where like someone would beats up your little brother and then the big brother goes and beats them up. If there's 41 <laughs> bigger and bigger brothers, like if you start on the totem pole, it's going to be a long fucking day before you get to dad to, yeah. to, to say anything about anything. It's like a video game. He like sends out the C team first. And then, you have to be like a, then you have to be like the boss son who he, had, who he had with like an enormous Mormon bitch. He just sends two mean girls. He sends his two meanest daughters to get you first. Yeah. It's, it's funny too, because this is going back to like medieval times thought. It's like, I have to have so many sons because if not, this castle's getting destroyed. Like we yeah. gotta have more kids. Yeah, yeah. Thought, yeah. Like, all right, I need like fifteen sons because eight of them are gonna die in the the wars they're conscripted into, or a childbirth. Like, like a quarter. We don't understand how gone, germs right? work yet, so that's gonna take <laughs> a few. We don't know what they are, but we're really afraid of them. <laughs> like people just die. It's weird. <laughs> they can, can you imagine that? how like, we pray? Like <laughs> back in the day, it was just like the only conception you could have of germs was like even them being airborne was just because you would get sick even though you didn't touch the gross person like that's the only way they could know it's like okay it so something stink. something's clearly going around here they and i mean it was they the were stink of the dead body yeah like, like oh oh no like like like, like the, the vapors of it got mm-hmm. me that's that that would make you ill like they're almost which, close. which they, they were close that's like, like they were close yeah. enough <laughs> just yeah. Put it together. yeah there was um this thought process this was right before germ theory came around i want to say it was like american civil war i think it lasted it's like spanish civil war so like 1880s the idea was if you were a doctor operating on living patients right so like someone an amputation gunshot whatever Mm -hmm. the idea was that the blood of the living is good right because they're not dead the dead bad live good so Mm -hmm. if you get a bunch of blood on your hands and you let it cake on and harden, that acts as a protective layer against other things. So the idea was, if you were working on people, like in a medical tent, never wash your hands, because you're supposed to have as much coverage from one person to the other. 
And then they tried yeah, washing yeah. their hands during World War One, and they're like, oh, we're having like a 98% survival rate yeah. <laughs> over what the last year's demographics. This is incredible. Isn't that like uh, the Florence yeah. Nightingale story? Or like she was a big advocate of, of washing your hands. Yes, and a lot of yeah, people at the time yeah. were like, shut up, you dumb bitch. <laughs> Where's my Meanwhile. blood bucket? <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, a bunch Where's of pussies Muslim? really. They don't understand how inoculation works. <laughs> you need I to bet there was a Muslim dip guy your hands somewhere in before surgery. Like, oh yes. Really washing up that same year. There was a Muslim in the desert. <laughs> oh, those fools. <laughs> <laughs> like they knew, didn't they? Like, like a lot a lot things. of Middle Eastern countries did. You're right. Yeah. Jesus. A lot of cultures figured it out way before <laughs> yeah. that. Yeah. yeah. And uh, working immune system. Healthcare Thank sucks. You. I mean, the, the Romans great. figured that shit out. They washed their hands. <laughs> I, they, I was they watching did, a thing. They were talking about that device that was invented apparently during World War One. When you break your, uh, what's the bone from your hip to your knee? Is that a femur? Femur. So mm-hmm. when you break your femur, that the biggest bone in your leg, the muscles pull the 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 hip to the knee because they're you know they're under pressure normally, oh, yeah. and the bone is now break, broken. So that bone slips past the each shaft mm. slips past the other, and so. Ugh the death rate of someone who had broken their femur was massively high. It's like a career wound. This is a career mm. ending wound. <laughs> yeah. You're muted, Kyle. Oh, we lost you, Kyle. <laughs> it's a career ending injury. Mm-hmm. If you're, you know, your career is fighting in a trench or Being fighting alive. the unions or the Confederates, <laughs> all those, all those guys. Man, he got so mad. He was like, I'm, I'm done with this. <laughs> He got so pissed that he's that he's being disproven that demons exist. I have a suspicion that it's hardware. You're still muted. One, two, three, four. Oh, you're, there you're, you're not. There he is. So, um, it would be a career-ending wound to say the least. You'd fucking die. And uh, they they created this hmm. device that just stretches the leg back out. It looks like it's kind of like a superstructure that goes over your hip all the way to the end of your leg, like a birdcage type apparatus. Is it like a yeah. Chinese finger trap? No, but hmm. more like a, a long I think that's what the leg does you, in that leg. situation. But, you know, stretch the leg back out so they can get those two shafts together so they can mend. And then um, the, the the death rate just plummeted. Like, like that one hmm. thing was, the, was, was what they needed to do. Can you when imagine I, growing up, like, like getting hurt in a time where the bone saw was the doctor's most common implement? Dude, I would be, I, I've broken every limb bone at this saw. point. <laughs> Do you know what I would look like? I'd be a worm. <laughs> no. You wouldn't be Woody, you'd be Stumpy. Uh, yeah. No, he'd be Woody. <laughs> he'd be the guy with two wooden legs. You'd be like, that like that. oh, come Woody, he'll when never I, sink. <laughs> when I broke my left arm the to set it, they had a thing that was basically... You know the Chinese finger toys. You put your hands in, yeah. and when you pull them, they get tighter. Uh, it was a device like that. It was for six fingers. I, I'm not sure why, but it had like six little finger traps. They put your hand in it, and then they put weights on your bicep, and it just pulls your form apart. Hmm. That's Very how they. Interesting. That's how they set bones. Yeah, because oh, I'm under you. I've had it. it also a... doesn't sound like you're describing jujitsu. <laughs> <laughs> there is a super lovely husband and wife couple where I trained. <laughs> And uh, they were Mormon. They were really like sweet and nice. <laughs> Mormon jujitsu. Yeah. yeah, it's true. Yo. <laughs> and Deadly I really liked them both. Um, and she was pretty good, but I don't know if she had more skill than me. But it wasn't close because I was so much bigger and stronger. Yeah. And uh, um, but yeah, you just like she'd lay there on her back, knees spread, and you get in her guard. And if you don't know, that just means missionary position. It's exactly the same. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's just like this doesn't seem right but here we are yeah a mormon yeah, who can do that yeah. that's good tactics it's like i it's, demand a moment of your time to talk about your lord and savior <laughs> <laughs> Just you know federal you down government in agencies full Nelson. federal government agencies recruit um extensively from from mormon uh like mormon groups it's not a joke like like they, Wait, they exhibit why? when you say government agencies it. you talk about like the three like yeah, 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 yeah 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 they're, and they, um, they they find that Mormons are the perfect agents. They 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 have oh, they have this good. stable background. They have this this established history. They're they're often from the correct like uh, socioeconomic groups. Like they tons they of family right into that agency. In case they get out of line, the CIA can be like, hey, Ezekiel and Isaiah and Jeremiah and Jedediah and Susie and Alan and 
you know, the the other half of your siblings are in trouble you if you don't do this. Yeah. Hey, if, if you if that. you mess with us, we'll destroy your house. That'll be at least sixty seven people. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> they're they're people with roots. Um, as another yeah. way of thinking of it. Uh, mm-hmm. Whereas Enrique, who just like, hey, I'm not here for a long time. I'm here for a good time. Like, <laughs> we don't give him top secret clearance. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, why not? <laughs> he I'm seems happy card. about it. <laughs> I, I mean, like none of us know shit about the CIA compared to to Wendigoon. Is that true? Are the Mormons filling up our intelligence apparatus? Do we need to be worried? It it makes a lot of sense because like the CIA, they've been reined back in in recent years, but primarily like Cold War times and stuff. They were their own like dragon, like the, the FBI didn't like them. Other agencies didn't like them. Even at this day, I know people in the FBI who are like, oh, those spooks. I don't want to work with them. Like it's an entirely That's super different racist. machine. Mm-hmm. I, <laughs> and then they're like and don't get me started on the cia like, <laughs> like damn these guys are straight from the 50s <laughs> just, just wrap the show 17 hell. minutes long i'm loving it yeah. So yeah, yeah, that, that good. good game boys <laughs> you think you're liking it now it's not gonna make you love it <laughs> want to keep doing the italian hairdresser all the time <laughs> the new character he's you don't know how to do the voice so good. <laughs> the, the closeted italian hairdresser <laughs> <yes>. <laughs> you're a hairdresser yeah. <laughs> 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 i've been i've been watching videos <laughs>